lots of exciting stuff arrived lately. As usual, after filming, I had to cut the video into two parts. The second part will air next Thursday. Patreons, of course, were able to see both parts already earlier this week. This is a thank you for supporting the channel a bit more, especially the expensive mailbags. Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The today's mailbag will be a little bit different to the normal mailbags. As you see, I unpackaged most of the parts. This is to save some time. Maybe in the comments you give some feedback if this is a better form or if I shall uh, keep the packets closed till uh, the mailbag. Okay, let's start with this new format of mailbag. I start with these four packets. They are all from Arduino and they contain different boards. The newest from Arduino, they are called Nano Every, for example, Nano IoT, Nano BLE and Nano Sense. All very interesting names. Especially the BLE would be interesting, the IoT would be interesting, but also the Sense, also with the BLE aboard, on board. Unfortunately, this is not a success story up till now, because the support for these devices was not there. I did not find examples. I was not sure, at least maybe so I did something wrong. You can help me in, in the comments. I would like to have an example, for example, to use BLE or the, EI, the IoT stuff here, but um, I installed the newest version. I went also to the online Arduino IDE and in both uh, areas I did not find anything useful, so I cannot show you these boards. I would have loved to do something with original Arduinos, but for the moment nothing to show. The only thing I can show you is how they look. This is the Every. This is a, quite a cheap one. It's about $8 or something. It has a similar form factor than the, as the Nano, but it has a more modern chip on it and uh, it should be more or less compatible with the normal Nano. But uh, I do not see big advantages to use this one unless you need a lot of resources which can be provided by this chip here. The manufacturing quality seems to be okay as far as I can tell and they wanted also to have it flat on the bottom that you can solder it to your own PCB. So I hope I get some links with examples for these new boards here and then I can do a video about it. The next one is this transistor tester. It is one with this dial here. The others I had did not have this dial so I thought I want to have also one in my collection like that and so let's try a 0.1 microfarad. Now maybe you can see it. It has 109.9 nanofarad which is very close to the point one microfarad, but you see it is really hard to read. And if you turn it a little bit in one direction or in the other, you cannot read anything. So the idea of this transistor tester is good. You have here different selections of things like frequency generator, like a PWM. You even can measure the DS18B20 temperature sensor, IR decoders, IR encoders, the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, and you can also do a self-test with calibration. So it has many different functionalities here as expected, but unfortunately the display is really crappy. 
and uh, maybe I will find a replacement for that but like that it's no fun it's really no fun to work with it it should have it should have at least maybe a backlight maybe I didn't find the backlight switch that is also possible so send me if you know a comment by the way I had to solder the 9 volt battery holder myself it was not supplied um, because it has a external power source but this makes no sense for me for a tester here you can uh, measure voltages here is the square wave and PWM output and here is the input for frequency measurement so let's test a resistor so it is a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor and it shows 2201 ohm which is quite precise here is the listing it was around ten dollars free shipping to switzerland so the price is definitely okay for this board the next one are parts they are small switches the switches itself is okay you get uh, many switches but i loved this packaging here you can open and take one out they are quite small but uh, i need sometimes so, uh, such a small switches on a pcb or so and uh, this is why i bought them and i like also the different colors like yellow like red and even brown i do not know if i already saw once brown switches so two four six eight different colors nicely packaged here is the listing four dollar 49 free shipping to switzerland and here you see the different colors of the switches they have a size of six by six millimeters the next one are somehow related a uh, integrated circuit with quite old numbers on it and a pcb with some parts which have to be soldered and i wrote down here noise source and together with that i have here is something which uh, I have quite a long time already in the lab and it's named filter board. Now the idea is to create a noise source and then to do some experiments with filters. These are special filters, integrated circuit filters, which can be influenced uh, from the external you can uh, influence the, the frequency from 0 to 25 kilohertz this one this one i do not exactly know but it's also um, low frequency it's also in the kilohertz so it's audio frequencies definitely and uh, this chip is a chip which was uh, invented i think in the 80s or 90s and it was used in games you still get them somehow i don't know if they are really still produced it looks like they were produced and they are somewhere on stock and they sell it now from this old stock they are digital noise generators and uh, it's not a, a completely white noise the the principle of noise generation is completely different between the two and maybe we will see something if we do some experiments with that this is the listing of the kit it's really not expensive less than a dollar but of course it will include some tinkering here ah, it was shipping 25 cents in addition so it was a little bit more than a dollar and here is the listing of these chips the sn76489 an and uh, they cost five pieces one dollar plus one dollar point five shipping so also uh, not an expensive design so let's have a quick look at the data sheet first you see this is a really famous integrated circuit it has even an entry in wikipedia it shows here it has three square wave tone generators and two types of noise generator and it is ttl compatible which means 5 volt logic and here is interesting these data sheets are not really pdf 
data sheets, they are copied from, uh, from an original paper source. So they were even not electronically manufactured or they uh, were no, no more available in an electronic form. But at least we still have them. You will later on see other data sheets which have the same properties, which are also copied from paper. Otherwise, we could not use these integrated circuits anymore. These two things I got from M5 Stack. Nicely packaged, I have to admit. This is a IM5 stick. If you power it up, it does this. And you see here, it is a camera and a LCD. Here is the camera and here is the LCD. And in the middle, there is a well-known processor. It is the same processor like this one here from Saipeed. It is the K210. Here you see the listing of this M5 stick with this K210 and the camera, but it has no Wi-Fi. The mic's dock has a uh, Wi-Fi in addition, but also I do not know how they were able to put this processor in this small housing. I have now two different K210 processors, so I think I have to start to do something with them because uh, they are very interesting technology. As I mentioned last time already, this RISC-V open source processor design is quite interesting. And also the capability of this K210 processor is quite astonishing. It has some machine learning stuff in it and so on. So stay tuned for this module. And this is the M5 Stick C. Let's have a look at that. Ah, it's like a smart watch and it can be taken off here. So the form factor is the same, just the height is different and of course the content is different. Let's power it up too. This obviously has a Wi-Fi built in some buttons here to play around and here you have also ah, you have here some breakout pins and inside is a ESP32 Pico. So this is quite a powerful device also and it has a battery in it. So you really can uh, do deep sleep, I assume, and you can trigger it with one of the, of the buttons here uh, that it displays then something. So interesting technology. Uh, I have to see if there are already projects around which use this ESP32 Pico. These guys from M5 Stack really try to do something innovative. Uh, they do not just deliver boards they package it them in a nice uh, in a nice way and if it fits your needs then it's a perfect thing because it saves you some time to assemble everything you just can use it when it is delivered i just discovered that you can have like a pir hat like a temperature sensor and stuff like that to be connected to this m5 stick c so you even can extend it a little bit if you need it. So other than the Arduino boards, this board, the M5 Stick C, comes already with examples on uh, GitHub. And the interesting thing is, it is all Arduino code. So this one is called M5 Stick 5 or V. And uh, here we have a quick start guide with the firmware, hello world, and so on. Also here we have something to start with and to play around a little bit. But this is definitely not Arduino compatible. This is a different beast. The next one is from a viewer. 
dear Andreas. Quite a long letter here. And it is also from an Andreas. <laughs> so we are already two. And uh, after reading the letter and looking at his videos and so on, I think I understand now uh, the concept. These are similar boards and these boards can contain sensors, different sensors like one wire, like I square C, also analog sensors. And the idea is that you can really use standard out of the box Chinese sensors and just plug them in here, like this BME 380 or something here, or this temperature sensor. And there are two versions of this board which are very similar on this part, but here they are made for a ESP32 board. You can also buy the board from him and he proposes to use the LoRa uh, Heltec board here uh, that you also can connect this, these sensors using LoRa. The second board is made for a Raspberry Pi, like that. And you can have several of these boards for several projects, for example. So you just put it in your box and take another one out with different sensors and connect it to wherever you want. Andreas wrote that he did not include the LoRa software here, just to read the sensors attached. Now we can see humidity 42%, pressure 981.3, altitude <laughs> is uh, zero meters, which has to be calibrated of course. The air temperature 26 degrees, liquid temperature 28 degrees. So obviously both sensors seem to work here. You find the links in the description. He has a, a GitHub uh, repository where he describes all the different sensors and stuff like that and has also uh, pictures and so on. Nice work, plenty of open space where you can add things for your own project. This was part one. As said before, part two will air next Thursday evening my time. Bye.